So what are the structures that allow humans to reproduce? That's what we'll be talking about in this video. This information comes from chapter 18 from our text. Now I do want to start by the recognition of exceptions. Throughout this lecture, we'll be discussing the typical functioning of the human reproductive system. This description is not intended to minimize a recognition of exceptions to typical functioning, such as individuals who are intersex or those who are infertile. Gender identity is not the same as gender expression and is also not the same as anatomical sex. Likewise, the concept of gender is not the same as sexual orientation. More information on this can be found at www.genderbread.org. And so this is, again, an acknowledgement that things aren't always as simple as introductory biology lectures present them as being. In this lecture, we will be discussing the similarities and differences between an anatomically male reproductive system and an anatomically female reproductive system. While there are differences, we will start by discussing the similarities. Both typical anatomical sexes in humans have a pair of gonads, which are the organs that produce gametes. ducts or tubes to store and deliver the gametes, and structures to facilitate copulation or sexual intercourse. The ovaries are the site of gamete production in human females, and the ovaries contain structures known as follicles. Each follicle consists of a single developing egg cell surrounded by layers of smaller cells that nourish and protect it. The follicles also produce estrogen. The female sex hormone. So here we see an image of the female reproductive system from the front. We see the paired ovaries on either side with oviducts, also called fallopian tubes, leading towards the uterus. The uterus is the central structure, a pear-shaped structure composed of smooth muscle, with endometrium lining the inside of the uterus. The narrow neck of the uterus is known as the cervix, and this is directly adjacent to the vagina. Here in a side view of the female reproductive system, we again can see the, the shape of the uterus, the connection between the uterus and the vagina. And one aspect of female reproductive anatomy I would like to point out at this point is that the urethra, the connection between the urinary bladder and the outside of the body, is entirely distinct from the vagina. When we observe the male reproductive system, we will see that the urethra is shared between the urinary system and the reproductive system. Ovulation is the process by which an egg cell is ejected from the follicle. The egg enters the oviduct, a tube in which cilia sweep the egg towards the uterus. The uterus is the actual site of pregnancy. The cervix is the narrow neck at the bottom of the uterus. It opens into the vagina or birth canal. During copulation, the vagina serves as a repository for sperm. These are the structures of the female reproductive system. Now, when we talk about the male reproductive anatomy, 
there are external structures and internal structures. The penis contains erectile tissue and is used to deposit semen into the female's reproductive tract. Like with the female reproductive system, the testes or the gonads are paired structures, one on the right and the left. And there are additional tubes as well. The sperm is carried from the testes through the vas deferens to the other glands which produce the components of the semen. The testes are external structures, meaning they are outside of the main abdominal cavity. The testes produce sperm. They are the male gonads, and they're enclosed in a sac called the scrotum. Sperm production is optimal at temperatures below core body temperature. This is the reason why the testes are external structures, and the job of the scrotum is to regulate the temperature of the testes. Internally, there are several glands which contribute to the formation of the fluid that carries and nourishes and protects the sperm. This includes the prostate gland, the seminal vesicles, and the cowper's gland. Semen consists of the fluid from these glands and sperm from the testes. During copulation or sexual intercourse, sperm are produced in the testes and are transported through the vas deferens to the penis through which they are ejaculated. The prostate glands and other glands associated with the male reproductive system have lubricants, nutrients, and other chemicals that promote sperm survival in the female reproductive tract. In the female reproductive system, eggs are produced in the ovaries from which they pass into the oviduct. During copulation, the penis deposits sperm into the vagina. The sperm swim from the vagina through the cervix and uterus into the oviducts, where one sperm fertilizes the egg. The fertilized egg, known as a zygote, moves down the oviduct to the uterus, where it implants to continue development. In this next video, we're going to talk about the concepts of embryonic development and gestation.